Welcome to Addicted to Busy, the podcast specifically for overachieving property managers who are dying for a little more work-life balance in their lives. Each week, we dismantle all the BS that holds us back. You'll learn how to nix those tricky self-sabotaging habits so that you have the time, energy, and motivation to create what you really want in life. If you're looking to shift from overcommitted to overjoyed, this is the podcast for you. Let's do this. Now, your host, Anna Havalyana. Hello, and welcome back to Addicted to Busy. Today, we're going to chat about a concept that a client and I actually created together while we were in a coaching session, and we called it the rabbit hole runway. So just last month, I had the honor of speaking at the Boma, Indiana monthly luncheon, and it was amazing. I can tell you this was really one fun crew of people. Everyone was super kind and welcoming. And honestly, it was just fun to get back into the swing of regular networking events. I even met somebody who we had worked at the same company, but at different times. And it turns out that we worked on the same portfolio together. So it was so much fun to, you know, catch up about how our clients were doing and what our experience was of working with them. So I was laughing to myself because everyone at this event kept raving about this chicken that was going to be served. And to be honest, I was really nervous to speak. So I couldn't even bring myself to eat until after the event was over. Um, And those who know me know that I can get wrapped up in conversation pretty easily. So after the speech was over, I stayed for a minute and talked to people. And I didn't actually get to eat any of the chicken until after everyone had left. And sweet Lord, that chicken was amazing. No one told me that there was cream cheese inside. So thank you again to Boma, Indiana for A, allowing me to come and speak with you and B, serving me what was in fact the best chicken that I've ever had. So anyway, After the speech was over, it was really fun to hear what resonated with people. And what people started connecting on was this concept of the rabbit hole runway. So today we're gonna quickly go over what it is, why it's worth watching out for it, and what you can do if you encounter it. So let's start. Let's chat a little bit about rabbit holes in general. The term came from Lewis Carroll's 1864 novel, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, which as many of us know, was later turned into a movie by Disney. And the tale follows Alice who quite literally sees a rabbit and follows it into a rabbit hole where this crazy world exists. Within this hole, Alice faces everything from being trapped in a room to swimming in her own pool of tears meeting a caterpillar who starts smoking kuka, and then following this invisible cat through a forest. And in today's day and age, the concept of a rabbit hole has morphed into how we spend our time on the internet. We too can encounter a whole bunch of strange things in one place, that place being our phone screen. I love this quote from Catherine Scholes in The New Yorker. She says, in the original story, Alice falls for quite a while, long enough to scout out the environment, grab some food off a passing shelf, speculate erroneously about other parts of the world, drift into a reverie about cats, and nearly fall asleep. Sounds like us on the internet, all right. In the current use of rabbit hole, we are no longer necessarily bound for a wonderland. We're just in a long, attentional freefall with no clear destination and all manner of strange things flashing past. Oh my gosh, did you hear that? I just love it. Like she calls this an attention free fall with no clear destination. And I think that is so true. Oftentimes when we get stuck in a rabbit hole, we have gone unconscious. We're no longer aware of the time or even our surroundings. And yet we're still using up our time and energy on something that will quite literally not get us anywhere. 
Now we're all familiar with the current culture's definition of a rabbit hole. Typically when we think of internet rabbit holes, we're thinking about how we got on our mobile device for one thing, but ended up staying for another. As an example, I once got on my phone to check the weather, somehow ended up on Instagram, and then the next thing you know, I'm buying $20 ponytails on Etsy. Again, I needed to check the weather, and I ended up spending $20 on something that I really didn't need. But besides this, we actually go down other types of rabbit holes, specifically as it pertains to work. And this is where the rabbit hole runway comes into play. The rabbit hole runway is the best indicator that you have stopped working intentionally and instead have started working reactively or habitually. In other words, you're distracting yourself from your work with other work. What that looked like for me is I would maybe have two emails drafted on one screen neither of them ready, ready to send, perhaps a report that I was working on open in Excel in the background. I would likely have payables open on another screen, also not finished. And there's likely a tab open with either an Instacart or target order in process. Not to mention, I'd probably have group conversations going on in iMessage and somewhere on my desk was a post-it with a note. And I get it. Sometimes we had to open up that report because we needed it in order to answer the aforementioned email. But in a world where attention spans are decreasing by the day and in expectations of us are increasing by the minute, I truly believe that the best property managers will be the ones who know how to manage distractions and be able to work with a high level of focus. Our attention is a limited resource. And every day there are more and more distractions that are created with the sole purpose of getting our attention. There's an amazing book on this conundrum called The Organized Mind, Thinking Straight in the Age of Information Overload by Daniel Levitin. And in this book, he explains that there is a cost every time we switch tasks. To summarize, any time that we change what we're focused on, we cause up our brains to burn up more glucose. And glucose is actually what you need in order to stay focused. So if we're stuck in the rabbit hole runway, we're killing that energy source. And it's absolutely no wonder why we're exhausted, why we're emotionally drained from work, and why we're more likely to snap or why we can't seem to muster the energy to do things that we want to do outside of work. He goes on to say that task switching also messes with our hormones. So we get flooded with cortisol when we're stressed out and that can cause a myriad of problems. For those of you who are in the Addicted to Busy program, this is where you can start tipping into your overdoing it habits in an effort to feel better. Now, you know, the craziest part of all of this is that when you choose to stay focused on one task, you reduce the need for glucose. So staying focused on one task actually takes less energy. It kind of reminds me of the difference between city driving and highway driving. Driving in the city is less efficient than driving on the highway because your car's engine has to start and stop and adjust itself frequently. It burns more gas because the car has to work harder. On the flip side, highway driving is easier on your engine because the car has to do less work to maintain the same speed. Your brain is a powerful engine and we have a choice in how we care for that engine. Now, I will be the first to admit that our work environment is truly not set up to foster time or space to work uninterrupted. I mean, the one thing that I see repeatedly across all property management job descriptions is that the candidate must be able to multitask. 
But research shows that multitasking is actually not effective and can lead to more mistakes, thereby creating more work that we have to go back and clean up. So this is why I love speaking to large groups of property managers. After I spoke at the BOMA event, it was so fun to hear people conversing about their own rabbit hole runways. There were some people who were aware that it was a problem for them. And then there were others who said things like, you know, I didn't realize that until you said it, but yeah, I do that all the time. From there, it was just fun to watch people start talking about the tasks that they hate doing and the things that they're most likely to procrastinate on. And I love hearing about all of it because once you have that awareness, you have so much more power to make changes in the way that you work. So today we're gonna to focus primarily on work rabbit holes, but I will admit that I go on plenty of other rabbit holes as well. I'm infamous for starting to get ready in the morning and getting sidetracked. I'll start curling my hair and then jump over to making breakfast and then try to clean something in the living room or throw a load of laundry in. And then all of a sudden I'm like borderline gonna be late for work. But again, like I mentioned, the great news is that once you start seeing all of these rabbit holes, you will give yourself a higher chance of interrupting yourself before you've lost too much time and energy. Listen, if you are finding yourself either repeatedly burned out, or if you find that it's difficult for you to have the energy to do anything other than take care of your kids and work, it's worth paying attention to how much you task switch. There's this famous quote, I think attributed to Henry Ford saying, you know, if I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. Now we all know what happened here. He had to think outside of the box and deliver the next best thing, the car. And when I think about this for our industry, if I had asked property managers what they wanted, they would say more time. But just like Ford couldn't make horses go any faster, I can't magically give you an extra 10 hours of time each week. So much like Ford's car, we have to give ourselves something different. And what that is, is creating the ability to work intentionally and without distraction. What I want you to know is that there's absolutely nothing wrong with being in a rabbit hole so long as you know how to get yourself out. And that's what many of us struggle with. Seriously, we all do this from time to time. And if you catch yourself doing it, literally nothing has gone wrong. You've just encountered yourself being a human. All right, so what do you do once you have caught yourself in the hole? There honestly is no clear answer to this. Everyone works in different ways and your answer to this question will likely change based on whether or not you have an upcoming deadline. What I'm gonna to do today is throw out a bunch of options and you get to choose what you think will work best for you. Now, if you've heard me speak in person or if you've coached with me, you probably know what I'm about to say. And that is be prepared to fail. So many people are great at getting advice from books they read, podcasts they listen to and or courses they've taken. But the problem is, is that they're quitting on themselves too early when their attempts that they put out there don't get the desired results that they want. You must try, try, try again until you find what works for you. All right. So first of all, the first thing you do have to do is stop. Simply stop and acknowledge that you're bouncing from task to task instead of intentionally working on one thing at a time. Do not judge yourself. Do not get upset with yourself. Simply give yourself some grace for being human and then decide in that moment that you get to decide what you want to do next. Once you've stopped, there are a few things that you can try. The easiest thing to do is just grab a post-it and write down everything that you have pulled up on your computer screen. So that might look like you have an email drafted to a tenant, an email drafted to your supervisor, a report open, a stack of approvals you need to look at, and some follow-up on bids that you're waiting for. Often when we see it all written down on paper, we can quickly make sense of an order that things should be completed in. So perhaps you were working on the report 
but you realize that you needed a final bid. Perhaps the email was open because your boss was asking for the report. In this case, you can see an order of operations. Get the bid updated, change the report, and then email your boss. There's no need to have all three of these things open at once. Now, other times the answer won't be so clear. So another alternative is that you can clearly list out all of your deadlines. Oftentimes we know what they are and we may even have them listed in our calendar. But when you see them clearly written or typed out, we offer our brains a different way of interpreting what's being asked of us. Once you have that list of deadlines approaching, underneath each deadline, list out the smaller steps that need to be completed. Again, the action of listing your steps isn't to say that you don't know what you're doing or that you're disorganized, not at all. All we wanna do is get ourselves to stop jumping from task to task so that we can conserve all of that precious glucose that your brain needs. If you're in the Addicted to Busy program, it's times like these that the write it down and get it done worksheet are gonna be your best friend. Pull one out, or if you don't even have one on hand, honestly, a simple piece of paper will do. Either way, it is time to get it done. The third thing that you can do is consider some good old self-reflection. So many of us bounce from task to task because we're avoiding one specific task in particular. Usually it's something that we have little experience in, or in other cases, it's something that a lot of people are going to have their eyes on. So when we show up to work on that particular task, we freak ourselves out and do something else instead. And the trickiest part about this reaction is that all the while, we got to say that we were busy and that we were working all day. And sure, that's true, but we were also avoiding doing the hard thing. If you find yourself in this position, there's a few things I want you to know. A, there's nothing wrong with asking questions or asking for help or simply saying that you don't know how to do things. The best managers are not the ones who know it all and never ask for help. The best managers are the ones who fully acknowledge that they have knowledge gaps and then just seek to fill them in. B, discomfort is crucial for growth. This task that seems hard may in fact be very hard, but it will get easier if you allow yourself to move through it. The way that you react to uncertainty and discomfort will have a huge say in how far you go in your career. The presence of discomfort is not a problem. It's a necessary piece of growing into the next level manager that you're going to be. And C, the purpose of the rabbit hole runway is to simply clue us into our work habits. When you uncover that you're fearing a task, nothing has gone wrong. You are still human, you are still perfectly imperfect, and this too shall pass. All right, last, if these suggestions are not working, you may need to really stop and check in with how you're feeling. Burnout is a real thing. And in this day and age, I think we are all more susceptible to it than we think. The symptoms of burnout don't always get our attention until it is far too late. Within our coaching community, we do a deep dive into reflecting on the times that you've been burned out in the past so that those symptoms start getting your attention while you still have time to take action. We also create burnout plans so that when shit hits the fan, you already have a pre-decided list of ways that you can help yourself out. For some people that looks like hiring a cleaner for a day or ordering a meal prep service for a week or asking family and friends for assistance with childcare. For others, that might look like getting on their therapist's calendar or taking time out of their day to go get a massage or a haircut. If you find yourself in a state of burnout, please hear me when I say this. You cannot outwork burnout. You must stop and rest. 
One of the reasons I suggest manager stop and actually write everything down on a piece of paper is because it helps you conceptualize what's going on. So often our minds are swimming in various work deadlines as well as expectations and appointments from our personal lives. When we're just swimming in our thoughts, it's super easy for anxiety and overwhelm to start creeping in. When we take a minute and write things down, we give ourselves an opportunity to rationally problem solve. So I want you to think of it this way. Imagine that you're in the eighth grade math class and that the teacher has put an algebra problem up on the whiteboard. Or in my day, that was literally a chalkboard. Now, imagine one half of the room has a paper and pencil, but the other half doesn't. Which half do you want to be on? You're definitely going to want to be on the half that has the paper and pencil. Is it possible to complete the algebra problem in your head? Yeah, I mean, with enough patience and concentration, it can be done but it's so much easier when you see it on paper. Making a quick list allows us to switch from ping-ponging from one task to the next into using our prefrontal cortex to plan our efforts in a way that helps us go faster. So if you catch yourself within the beginnings of your work rabbit hole, simply stop, get a piece of paper, and follow one of the three suggestions that I mentioned. I think one of the fears that people have when it comes to figuring out work-life balance is that they think I'm just gonna tell them to cut down their work hours. And people can assume that means I'm asking them to do less, which of course leads to many other fears. Mainly that if you're working fewer hours that you will produce less and therefore you won't get promoted or receive a raise. And that's not necessarily what we're going for. What we're actually trying to do is figure out how to produce more on less time and energy. Being aware of your rabbit hole runway is one of the easiest ways to regroup yourself and remind yourself to work intentionally instead of reactively. Now on the flip side, I do wanna state that some multitasking actions actually work really well together. Some of my favorites are watching your favorite guilty pleasure show while walking on the treadmill, listening to podcasts while doing laundry or commuting to work, doing a sight walk while listening to a town hall update, or completing filing while you're waiting for an appointment to show up. Multitasking can be a huge tool. One of my favorite examples was when I was managing, I think, 11 different sites Instead of having my monthly one-on-one -on -one with my supervisor in an office setting, I asked him to meet me on site and do a site walk. This was amazing because first of all, we were outside and because of that, our conversation was much more natural and way less formal. Second of all, I loved getting a second set of eyes on my properties. He would point things out to me that I just didn't notice on my own walks, and I really got a chance to learn from him firsthand. And finally, it also made him as a supervisor look good because he could say to his supervisor that he had made it out to all of my sites at least once within the calendar year. And he didn't even have to make extra time in his schedule to do so. It was bundled up with a task that he already had to do, which was have a monthly meeting with me. The difference here is that this type of multitasking is intentional and neither task really requires your full attention in the way that maybe writing a report or closing out month end does. All right, my friends, I hope that you found this episode helpful. If you really want to dive in and get a hold of your rabbit hole runway, we have some amazing worksheets available up on our website to help you out all for free. Plus, once you sign up, anytime that we have a new resource available to go with the podcast, we'll send you a copy right away and you won't have to sign up again. I cannot stress enough. Too many people are just listening and consuming podcasts without taking the time to take it to the next level. There is a huge difference between knowing how something works and truly experiencing how something works. 
Think of it this way. You could read all of the books that you want about how to fly a plane. You could watch YouTube videos. You could read instruction manuals. You could write a dissertation on Bernoulli's principle. But until you actually get in the cockpit and learn how to fly, you will still not be a pilot. So I want to invite you to take it to the next level. When you consistently self-reflect, it's like putting yourself in the cockpit of your own experience. And all of this is available to you for free. So hop on over and check it out. You can find it at anahabliana.com slash journal. That's A double N A J A V is in volcano E double L A N A dot com slash journal. All right, everyone. Until next time, I love you. Keep going. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of Addicted to Busy. If you're enjoying the show, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. This helps others find the show, and we greatly appreciate it. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you in the next episode.